The lutka volterra model, also known as the predator-prey equations, are a very commonly used set of dynamical systems where they describe the relationship of two species where one is preys on the other. This was developed many decades ago and has made quite uh, has been demonstrated to be quite useful in population ecology. And it's continued to evolve and grow and get more complicated over time. But we're going to look at the most basic one that was introduced around the early 1900s. And that is a two-state model where there's one population of prey and one population of predator. And we're going to define these two groups with the variables x for the prey and y as the predator. And this can be like cat and mouse, for example, but you could imagine anything. It could be bird and insect, it, it doesn't matter, right? And so our goal now is to write down the set of differential equations that define this nonlinear dynamical system. So we're going to start by writing down the equation for the prey. In this equation, we are looking at the rate of change of the prey. And one of the things that that's going to be related to is going to be some term alpha times x. And what this is saying is that the rate of growth of the prey population is going to be proportional to how many prey there are. What this means is that the more prey, the more growth. And this makes intuitive sense because if you think about it, the more prey there are, the more babies that prey will have, and thus the population will grow larger. It also means that this is the way that prey will regenerate. They will gen regenerate based on primarily interactions with themselves. So the bigger the population is, the more it will grow uh, at that moment. But of course, this is counterbalanced by the fact that they will be consumed and preyed upon by the predator. Now, this is not a single, a single variable interaction, as was the growth rate. This is a second order interaction, which, re which requires the interaction of the prey and the predator. And so we're going to subtract that by another term, we'll call it beta. And that's going to be x times y, which represents the interaction of these two, of these two populations. And that's it. This represents how many animals are being consumed of the prey by the predator. So now let's write the equation for the predator. We'll define that as y dot. And here, we can, we can say that the primary limiting factor on the growth of the prey, of the predator, my apologies, is not the number of predators that exists, but instead on their food supply. And so again, since the prey are the food supply, that's another second order interaction. Now, it's not going to be like the SIR model where we take this beta term and switch it to positive and put it over here. Why? Because a single death of a, pre of a prey animal does not mean a one-to-one -one growth of the predator animal, right? A wolf doesn't eat a rabbit and suddenly another wolf is born. The wolf has to eat many rabbits in order for another, another predator and I, it to have it to have it to successfully have babies and generate new predators. So those parameters are different. As a result, we're going to treat it with a different variable. We're going to set it to delta, but it's still going to be the interaction effects x times y. Now you might also be looking at this and comparing it to the SIR model and saying, well, how come we're not dividing by one or more of these terms here to, 
prevent us from getting into a situation where we have where we have you know animals squared as this would be and the answer to that is well it's all just being consumed by these beta and gamma terms uh beta, beta, beta and delta terms the these constants are, are not unitless as was in the case of the SIR model instead these constants are indeed uh, carry units and they they help normalize the equation such that you stay in units of prey and you stay in units of predators here you don't need to really think about that too much but that's sort of why we're not dividing by uh, dividing by anything to keep the units uh, sensible as we had to do in the SIR model simply because we could and then we could abstract away and give better terms uh, get better numbers for things like beta and uh, and delta in the SIR model but here we're we're just we're assuming that all of the that dimensional stuff just gets absorbed in these constants and that's totally okay finally we have to account for the mechanism by which the prey dies or the predator dies and that's being uh, some subtraction and we're going to subtract it from gamma times y and this simply represents the fact that in general the way in which the predator dies is at some fixed rate you know by old age Whereas the primary mechanism that the prey dies is by yeah, being eaten. We could also figure out some way to take it, you know, take, you know, we could also add a, a negative term here, for example, right? Negative, uh, I don't know, we'll call it C Y uh, X and, and have the prey die off themselves as well. But you don't really need to worry about this too much because you can incorporate that into alpha and show that as a net growth rate. So if you want to incorporate this alpha as both the birth and the death rate, whereas obviously the prey being highly, um, highly prolific will, and highly fertile, will just continue to grow um, a, a, as much as possible, then the growth rate, the birth rate will, will be larger than the death rate. So you don't need to worry about another term here. The key to understand this is that the primary Thing that will that will decrease the population of the prey is predation and the key limiting factor that will prevent the growth of the predator population is the food supply and so these four terms characterize this dynamical system quite well and that's the basic intuition that's the lotera vodka model in a nutshell 